I'm Rina Misaki. I'm building sustainable businesses. I'm actually building two different businesses at the same time all around the environment. One is a Jollibee, as you can see. Jollibee is uh, my own recipe, natural soaps and zero waste products. And a second business that I'm doing, it's the, I'm a bubble performer, just sort of to spread a bit of a positivity with a rainbow colors. Thank you, Aggie. And uh, next up, Ali. Hi everyone, I'm Ali and I'm owner of Wildflowers Healing. Um, my whole business encompasses natural, organic uh, self-care and healing. So uh, I like to offer alternative ways of healing uh, that avoid medication and uh, avoid harm to the planet and, and harm to ourselves and the people around us. So that's what I do. Thank you, Ali. And uh, last but not least, uh, Ben. Hello, I'm Ben from Saints Coffee. Uh, we're a coffee shop and a cocktail bar in the heart of Northampton on St. Giles Street. Obviously, we sell coffee, we do cocktails, but we also do brunch, wine, cheese and charcuterie. And we do a lot of events based around any and all of the above as well. Thank you, Ben. Great. So according to uh, Social Enterprise uh, UK, uh, social enterprises exist in nearly every sector from consumer goods to healthcare, uh, community energy to creative agencies, restaurants to facilities management. Well known examples include uh, The Big Issue, Divine Chocolate, and the Eden Project, but there are over 100,000 social enterprises throughout the country contributing over 60 billion pounds to the economy and employing over 2 million people. Uh, four of those enterprises are with us today. And my first question to all of you is, why did you set up your business? And what is the social and environmental mission of your business? And I will start with um, Salma again first. So Barry, mine is a bit of a unique story. Um, mine started initially just as a little lockdown project um, during lockdown. Um, and it's just grown since then. Um, and now I commit a portion of the profits to supporting women's wellness. So um, supporting projects that um, empower, um, help boost self-worth, um, self-esteem, so that's kind of this, my sort of business story. Great. And um, and how, how was when you set up your your business was uh, the social kind of element the main focus, or was it just you 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 started it up because you thought it'd be a good idea, or as a hobby of yours, or or something like um, that? Well, it, initially it was a hundred percent for charity. So yeah, the social aspect was the main focus. Um, it was meant to just be a short term one off or two off project. And it just continued to grow as local interest um, in artisan products increased. People loved it. My online audience kept wanting to buy. So it just, I just, I just took um, the audience's lead, you know, the customers, I just provided them with what they wanted really. Um, so yeah, social part of the, the social element was the most important bit for me. Um, and then over time, um, a proportion of the profits go straight back into women's wellness projects. Okay, fantastic. And one of those I believe is uh, um, walks in, in the local park, isn't it? Yeah, every fortnight we have women's wellness walks in Northampton that I do with Saints Coffee. And that's how me and Ben met. Oh, perfect. He can't come though, because he's not a woman. <laughs> he's not a lady. <laughs> ben, we can we can do our own walks. Yep. <laughs> okay, and uh, uh, well, since you mentioned Ben, I'll go to Ben next then. So uh, the question again was, why did you set up your business? And what is the social or environmental mission of your business? Thanks, Barry. Well, for me, it was about kind of being able to build a premium business that people recognize as being from Northampton, something that's trying to bring something new to the town, but also having purpose at the heart of its reason for being. So for me, profit's not a dirty word. I think it's important for businesses to make money, 
but in terms of making that money, I think there's a lot of good that can be done in the community at the same time, and they go hand in hand and they help to fuel each other. So for me, our, our social enterprise revolves around, as I said, the coffee shop and the cocktail bar, but using that as a space to help others overcome different issues or challenges that they're facing, um, things around social mobility, so a lot of the work that we do with local schools around trying to raise aspirations, break down barriers. Likewise with social justice, again, the work in the schools, but also some of the work that we do around employability and helping people who are furthest from the labor market back into work through training as a barista or as a bartender or as a chef. And then lastly, around improving mental health, especially related to isolation and loneliness in the elderly. To me, it's a bit of an open goal for a coffee shop to be a place that that people can come together who are really struggling to um, make friends, meet new people. So we've partnered with charities to do that. And, and the reason for that is more around my own personal experiences growing up, things that I've seen, challenges I've seen around my family. And they, they've dri driven pretty much each of the projects that we've chosen to, to focus on. Um, so I would say that the social mission is, is at the core of our business. Um, back to your original question, Barry. Uh, that's really important to us. Fantastic. And you, you recently opened up a, a shop in, in, in Northampton town centre. How, how, how has uh, the local community engagement been with that with regards to what you do um, from a social aspect as well? I think from a social perspective, it's been great to actually have the space to run these projects in person. So a lot of them were online for the longest time during lockdown when we just wanted to be meeting in person, but we couldn't open the shop. So that's been one element that's been really positive. Another has been from a customer perspective. I think customers and consumers are becoming a lot more savvy around what businesses are doing to, to help promote the local communities that they're doing to try and help it. So I think it's helped us from a business perspective as well that people are really buying into, actually this is a small coffee shop, but they're trying to reach out and work with different areas of the community. So it's been very positive so far. Oh, that's fantastic to hear. Thank you. And uh, let's go to Ali Wildflowers. Hi. Um... I guess I have always been a healer from ever since I was a little child and I often get described as an intensive care bear and I think <laughs> and it's so true um I can't hear a problem and not have a positive resolution for, for to support you in fixing it so uh, my brand my company is all based around my passion and I I guess it's really important um, for me to say that you have to be happy, happy in your work life. It takes up probably over 50% of your entire life. And I think it's really, really important that you bring happiness into every element of your day. So in terms of like my social mission, it's very much uh, built around self-care, making self-care a habit, noticing when you start dipping and having positive tool a positive toolbox um to put in place um every time you, you start to feel yourself coming down um and i'm a vegan um animals and the environment is so 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 important to me and i bring that into my brand and i bring that into my business just by growing everything myself, making sure that it's environmentally friendly, um, toxin free, chemical free, um, just because I think a lot of the stuff that we have in our everyday lives um, is, isn't doing us much good. And I think mental health and uh, emotion awareness uh, is massive at the moment and there are so many reasons um, uh, and so many different things that are causing that not just um, having to deal with our own personal stuff so it's the environment around us it's the products we use you know uh, there is a, a massive input from lots of other ways so I guess um, what I try and do is think up magnificent ways to just support each and every person individually so um i think i think that's the answer <laughs> good good so as as the as the the healing bear in the local community you you would draw not only for your own work-life balance but also with that that pursuit to want to help other people have that balance in in their lives in their everyday yes. lives 
Perfect. Thank you. And and Aggie, how about you? Why did you set up your business and what is your your social or environmental mission? Or I should say businesses, because um, a couple of businesses sprung up since we first met. Um, that is correct. Everything I think we have done it as a family, we always try to be more sustainable. There's five of us, two dogs, so I always was looking for things to be environmental friendly. And when my third child went to school, I've decided it's time for me to do something for myself, but I still wanted to be a full-time mom to my three kids and be independent and sort of be able to work outside nine to five and be flexible to do two things at the same time. So that's why pretty much everything what I do regardless the businesses is from my passion. And to be honest, the main thing for me was I wanted to be a part of the change. I wanted to empower those who struggle, uh, but not ready to give up regardless of the situation. Um, I'm truly believer that one bad chapter does not mean your story is over and wanted to be a change of a business that show it's not so difficult to be environmental friendly, not so difficult to actually make a change. Um, and as well, really important thing for me was to show that People with different abilities cannot have any limits. They can literally do whatever they want to and how they want to. And I think it's empowering that it's so important, regardless of abilities, mental health, and pretty much show that everything can be put it together. As a social thing, even the bubbles itself, it's something that came from communities because I've been enjoying bubbles making around Northampton Shay. And it's pretty much now for me is bringing a bit of a colors to someone's gray day and seeing people enjoying the colors and pretty much having fun. It's, I think it's something when you've got those sorts of people with a smile and positive feedback, it's, it's so amazing. And it's, that's what's driving me and driven the passion and being on the other side, it's something we all kind of make a change regardless, whatever it is and push it through. Fantastic. So clearly, um, you're all driven by not only wanting to do good, but feeding off the, the, the impact you are having on, on those that you're providing your products and services to. Um, and, and on that note, um, two questions um, combined. Um, how do you achieve or how do you go about implementing your main um, social and environmental goal? And more importantly, how do you go about monitoring the impact of your social and environmental goal? And I'll come back to, uh, let me come back to Salma first, because you started and we'll go around again. You, you asked too many questions in one question. So <laughs> I'll answer part of it. And then if I missed anything, you're gonna have to. Um, so, because I'm very, my, um, I sell locally, I do have an online audience, national audience that I do sell to my online orders, but um, a lot of my orders are online. So um, I support a, a real life um, community project, which is the wellness walk at the moment. Um, so that's how, um, that's sort of the social impact um, so yeah, and it's based on, it, it's been going since May 2021, every fortnight since then. So that's feedback to show that it's working, people need it. Um, the ladies who come, some of them have been coming all the way since the beginning um, on and off. So that, that's sort of the feedback as well. So was that, was there, is that the question? Was that, yeah, that the yeah. right so how, Yeah, how, how do you go about what do you do to for your social environment mission and how, yeah. how do you um how do you monitor the the impact of that and, and, and like you said you do that through um getting feedback um yeah. on on a monthly basis to see that you know people are finding a benefit from whether it's um the products you're using or whether it's they come to the monthly uh women in the park walks and things like yeah. that but you're able to 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 see that you're you're having a positive impact on, yeah. on these because it's all quite um, at a local level. Yeah. Um, it's it's very easy for me to um, monitor the feedback at the moment. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's working at the moment. But as the business grows, um, 
the the projects may change or evolve as well and then there'll be different ways to um manage the impact or measure the impact good good thank you sama and uh let me go to let me go to ali this time hello um I guess with the healing side of things, it's all based on feedback. Um, I always ask for a, a little bit at the end. We kind of finish the healing and then have a discussion about how it went for that person. Um, and we, I follow up a week to two weeks later just to make sure that everything's going OK. Um, I can only monitor it that way. Um, but with regards to the, the environmental impact, we have an ethos that we work to every single time we bring out a product, like a checklist of things to make sure that we're still staying true to our brand and, and our personal, um, you know, personal feelings about the environment um, and about animals. So we just sort of go through that checklist and in weekly meetings and every time we make something just to kind of monitor it that way and make sure we're staying true to, to what we're saying as a brand. Good, good. Thank you. Thank you, Ali. And it sounds like a good way to, to monitor to monitor that. And it's not only good for, for you to know that you have an impact, but also when you when you look in the future to 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 evolve or to to expand your 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 business operations, you you've got that wealth of um, feedback to, to build upon. Okay. Um uh, next uh, Ben please. Sure. So um, in terms of actually implementing our main social goals, at a practical level, check I'm not on mute, at a practical level, uh, we just try to use these coffee space as coffee shop space as flexibly as possible. So when it's busy as a business, we focus on the business. But during non-peak times, we try to bring in the key projects that we have. And there's three main areas that, that we work around in particular. We have a project called Northampton Barra Stars which is a corny play on the word barista, where we're trying to use a hospitality venue to provide people with the training and the confidence to get back into employment. So we actually run the workshops during quieter times, and we actually, in the busier times and quieter times, give people hands-on training behind the counter, working on different things like food prep, making coffees, making drinks, just to build that confidence and their CVs. In terms of the work with schools, most of that at the moment is done in the school. So we actually travel out to them to do talks around different things, bring in people with different experiences to that the children can relate to, whether that's related to neurodiversities or if it's related to race or sexuality, whatever it might be. We try to find people that can come in and talk about those, but from different angles, um, not just pigeonholing black people talking about their experience of being black or women talking about difficulties that they faced in different ways but actually making it a lot more complex which is the reality that most kids face um, so to give an example of that we brought a, a black gentleman from the Caribbean in to talk about his issues around autism and how schools treated him differently just so children can try and relate to different issues that, that they can see um, in their own lives. And then the last one around using the off-peak times where we bring in elderly for a project called Coffee in the Community, where we've, we've partnered with Voluntary Impact and they've helped us find people who are classed as severely isolated. They don't have any friends or family. Once a week, we get a mini bus. We go around, we pick them up, bring them in, pamper them, and then take them home. And the idea then is to build a group that they can actually have their own friendship group and people they can reach out to for their own kind of inclusion, inclusion if you like. We do this by dedicating 25% of our profits from the business to these projects. So that's kind of the financial side of things. There's a practical and then there's a financial. Uh, I don't know if you want me to talk about metrics as well. I think that was your original question, Barry, but we, we go into quite a bit of detail on this. I don't want to bore everybody. <laughs> well, no, that, that, okay, yeah. No, that's that's perfect that you've, you you go into metrics and stuff. So clearly you're quite um, advanced in how, how you're monitoring um, your impact. In, in the local community. So that, that that's fantastic to hear, thank you. Um, okay, and uh, next on to Aggie. Well, as I said, my main thing is going everything about the environment. So all my products are, as far as we can do it, are vegan and locally sourced if we can, but as well, we're fighting pretty hard to all our packaging to be fully compostable, not recyclable, not biodegradable, literally be compostable, whatever our packaging is going to end up, 
it's not going to leave any impact on the environment. Um, we're using a green host for our websites, which obviously that's reducing our carbon footprint. And as well, we're cutting on paper use, which instead of using normal paper, we're creating wildflowers paper, which is for our mission to save the bees. As the social wise, um, as a company, we're trying to be present as much as we can in local communities, events, pretty much being then and surrounding and spreading a bit of positivities and sort of showing how things can change with us, literally simple things. And the main thing what we're really fighting for is we redirecting any waste from the soaps that we can, instead of just dumping as a waste, we diverting to go to homeless shelters, any kind of charities that are in crisis, sort of spreading a bit of um, positivity and um, kindness around. Fantastic. Thank you, Aggie. Thank okay, you. so moving on. Um, with the recent uh, Earthshot Prize and COP26 in full swing, um, it's it's both fantastic and comforting to see growing passion from citizens and businesses around the world to create and support uh, projects which have a social and or environmental benefit. And with uh, the recent global pandemic, uh, mental health has really been pushed in, in, in the limelight. And as, and as business owners, it's, it's impossible to separate your mental well-being and work-life balance from your business operations there it's all interlinked it goes hand in hand so in the pursuit of making a positive impact whilst each of you are running a company um, how do you as business owners promote and look after your own mental health and i'll go back to salma hi everyone um Another huge question from Barry. <laughs> so um, when you're a small business or um, sort of a startup, you do every aspect of it yourself and it does impact you, your mental health. And there's two things that I try to do to support my mental health. And um, the first thing is um, you've got to focus on your core values or your purpose of why you do, why you do what you do. Um, and that usually helps you, your mindset and helps you focus on the positives um, because it's easy to get distracted um, when things don't go to plan or, um, so that's one thing um, to stay focused or bring yourself back to your purpose and your core values. And the second way is just a practical way. So give yourself breaks. So as I said, I manage all of all aspects of the business. Um, so I try and give myself break, breaks when it comes to social media. Um, I I reduce how you know I, I don't take all orders. I, so I give myself a break. So I do all the production as well. So yeah, sort of a practical thing. Give yourself, plan yourself breaks. Give yourself breaks, and um, to help your mindset and stay focused. Always bring yourself back to your values and your purpose. So that's that that that's my advice, and that's what I try and apply to myself. So. Fantastic, thank you, Salma. So you always come back to to the why you started your business in the first place. You never lose sight of that. Well, well. I do lose sight of it because <laughs> I I'm quite um, a sensitive person in real life, and um, things do bother me. Um, people's opinions, or um, if I'm not making as much progress, my own what I think success is you know mm. so that's why I try and remind myself what my purpose is or what my core values are what my long-term vision is um because yeah because you can get distracted and it does impact your mental health so it's just a strategy that works to think about why you do what you do and what your long-term goals are so. perfect some good advice there thank you Salma and uh Ali how about you um, being in the wellness business, uh, I have to practice what I preach, which I do, but I am a human um, and life does get on top of me as well. Um, and as Salma said, um, 
when you are a small startup business, you are doing everything yourself. You're managing your social media, you're managing your product load, um, you go out to wellness events, you network, there is so much to it. Um, and I personally didn't realize when I started how much I would actually have to do. So I guess it's just a case of managing your time, um, setting working hours and sticking to them. And I have a self-care Sunday, which is the day that I make sure that my phone is switched off um, because if it's on and I'm working through my personal mobile to do my business. So if it's on and I see it, I can't ignore it. So mm. I have to switch it off. Um, and I use my own products. Um, I know that they work um, and I, I love that I do that. Um, so everything that I sell for self-care, I use myself. Um, even if it's just down, especially in autumn, sitting with candlelight in a blanket is a massive impact on your mental health at the end of your working day. You know, things like that, that don't actually take much time or much thought, but really do impact um, how you relax at the end of a working day. Um, I have to self-invest in healing myself because I get uh, triggered by other people's problems and what they're going through as well, um, just because I can relate. So I have to, you know, really keep on top of that and be like, okay, that's not that's not my emotion playing out here. It's just I'm remembering when I went through that. So I have to make sure that I get healing and um, Reiki healing or energy healing or something like that myself. So I guess it's just making sure that my self care um, and self uh, listening to my body and and what's going on is paramount in everything that I'm doing really so fantastic so it sounds like you you being the well-being um expert or practitioner yourself you you are making sure you practice what you preach and and looking after yourself as well and ha having a, having a tuning and a checkup with yourself is, is important isn't it yeah yeah it completely avoids burnout completely if you just take a minute every hour to just check in and go oh I've got a bad back that means this is happening yeah so you can just avoid it perfect thank you thank you Ali you're welcome and uh to, to you Ben I think um the key for me is around kind of compartmentalizing the different elements of the business and the social projects and accepting that sometimes the focus will be on more more on one than the other so the temptation is wanting to try and do all of it all of the time and it's not possible so that that's the hardest battle I guess in coming back to what um Ali and Salma were saying around different challenges of starting your own business there's so many things to do and it's a bit overwhelming so that's one of the things I try to do is compartmentalize things another thing that affects me personally is comparing myself and my achievements to more established organizations, whether that's on the business side or on the social side of things. Mm. A big reminder and a big mantra for myself is not really to compare my start to other people's middles or ends because they've been around, they've managed to achieve things. And I do, it does get to me if I've been working away at something for ages and somebody comes, comes along and says, well, they're not for years. It's easy. That, that sort of comment will, will affect me because I've been working hard on it. I just remember actually it's easy for them now because somebody put in the hard miles earlier. So that's one thing. And it, I guess that comes back to compartmentalizing in time as well, where you are on your journey. Um, those would be the two key things. The other one that's obvious, I think most people should be trying to do it, is just time off and away from whatever it is that you're focusing on. It's just healthy to get a bit of time to, to decompress. But I know it's easier said than done. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you, Ben. And yeah, you're you're right. It's, it's always important not to to judge yourself or to compare yourself to others. Um, we all go at our own pace, and we all enter at different times in the market and in our life as well. So yeah, good advice. Thank you. And uh, finally, Aggie. Um, in that case, I'm gonna come from a completely different story. Actually, I've been struggling with mental health for years, years. And since starting the business, it was the day I've stopped my medications after years of being on them. So actually the whole driven passion business thing, it's my goal and it's sort of my healing process. And if I'm really struggling, 
I think what I've learned is trying to be resilient to stress, which for me is sort of take a break, um, go around mountains, hiking, scrambling. Um, I've started the cold water therapy as well, sort of working on my mental health, trying to sort of get to the goals I want to. And if I'm really, really struggling, then I've always got Ali that I can go with and get a bit of advice and so how to bring myself up. But it's actually been nine months since of medication, fighting with businesses, being still where I am trying to thrill, trying to face every difficult situation as much as I can. And I think that everyone will agree. We need to admit it's okay not to be okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the most important thing. It's okay for, to take a time off. It's okay to leave it. It's okay that it's not on time. Because if we doing the things for ourselves and we more positive, the rest of it is just going so smooth. But it is difficult, but it's okay not to be okay and just gain to your goals. Perfect. Thank you again. And, and, and yeah, um, an amazing personal journey um, that, you, that you're on uh, personally and business-wise. And it's, um, thank you for sharing that with us, but uh, also with the, the BIPC Northamptonshire team since you've, uh, since you've kind of engaged with us. It's, it's fantastic to see um, that each of you are in some way supporting each other as well. You know, so you're buying your products and services from each other, you're collaborating together to promote each other's uh, services. So we see that with, for example, Ben and Salma with the, with the, with the health walks and Ali and um, Aggie with um, sharing your services and, you know, kind of sitting down and supporting each other's businesses. Um, so yeah, as, as we come to the, to, towards the, the end of the session, I guess, you know, social and, enterprise is is it's not just a trend um but it it's a growing and important way of doing business and it's fantastic to have have the four of you here as examples of of brilliant local um, businesses doing good within the local community um, and it is okay to do good and make money at the same time um, like ben said profit is it shouldn't be a dirty word um, for a social enterprise and it isn't you are finding a way to find balance for yourself in your own lives but also help other people, uh, whether it's a social or environmental um, purpose. Um, but most importantly, it is essential for those managing a social enterprise to look after their own mental health, because we all know starting a business can be a very lonely adventure. Uh, but there is fantastic support networks out there. Each of you have proven that here today. Um, of the fantastic network support that you've provided for each other, but also um, through your through your local um, BIPCs as well. Um, I just want to take this opportunity to say uh, thank you to to each of you for joining me today. So uh, Aggie uh, Brozinski, I think uh, from Jollibee, uh, Ali Mitchell, Wildflowers, uh, Ben uh, Francois from Saints Coffee, and Salma Shah from uh, Granola by Salma Shah. Um, thank you very much for for taking the time out uh, today to to join us and to be a part of a, a BIPC startup day. Thank you. Thank you, Salma. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Aggie. Thank you, Addy. <laughs>